In this video, I want to show you how to take the CBush element forces and how to write them out to a CSV file. So here, if we look at the F06 file, you have a table for the forces in the CBush elements. Our goal is to write that out to a CSV file. So how do we do that? Now, the procedures I'm going to describe in this uh, video are only for MSC NASTRAN and not another NASTRAN version. We're going to be leveraging what's called the H5 results file. If you want to output this file, there are two ways to do it. You can either use the MDLPRM HDF5 entry with a value of 0, 1, or some other value. Um, this was first available, I believe in 2016 or you can use the newest bulk data entry uh, hdf5 out which will trigger the uh, output of the h5 file after you have the h5 file you're going to have to either use python or the hdf5 explorer now the hdf5 explorer is free uh, this is part of the post processor web app that is also free so we'll take a look at all of this throughout this video. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me explain one way not to do this. You might be tempted to use Python. You might be tempted to open the F06 file with Python. You might be tempted to go line by line, find this table, read the columns, and then write out a CSV file. This is the most time consuming and difficult way of getting the CBush element results. So do not read the F06 file. I recommend reading the H5 file because it's a lot easier, it's less error prone, it's faster, and there are just a million other reasons why, in my opinion, it's easier to read the H5 file. So there is a Python script that's already been written this Python script is free. I'm going to add a link to the script either in the video description or the comments below. So if you want the script, click on the link, download the script, uh, give it a glance. Always make sure that these Python uh, statements are legitimate. You don't want to download some random Python script from the internet and just run it without first looking at the file. Uh, so here again, you can look at the lines on your own. And now the line that you should edit is the very final line. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the path to the H5 file, and that's going to be the first argument. And then the second argument is going to be the path to the data set or the element forces of the C bush elements. So this is the path. And then at the end, I want to add the name of the CSV file that I want to use. So after you have this, Let's go ahead and navigate to that directory, which I'm already in. And let's go ahead and run Python. Let's run this Python script to get our CSV file. Here I get an error. It says that the module name H5PY has not been installed. Here at the very top of the script, you get a list of all the libraries that you should have installed. Um, here, I'm not using the correct interpreter. So let me go ahead and find a different Python interpreter. So I'm using Anaconda to manage my different Python interpreters and to manage the different libraries I have installed. So here, the first part of this statement is the Python interpreter, and then the second argument is going to be the name of the script. Let's go ahead and run this. Now you'll get a, this odd output. What you should be looking for is in the directory. Is there a new CSV file? And if I open the CSV file, And apparently, I've opened this in my spreadsheet program. So here, let me open this in Notepad just so you see what the CSV file looks like. So this is what that looks like. We did not read the F06 file. This, this is the most time-consuming way. Instead, we read the H5 file with Python, and we quickly outputted the results. If you open this in Excel or a different spreadsheet program, one column is for the element ID. Another column, the subcase column, is for the different load cases. 
Here we have the spring forces uh, for the spring along the x, the y, and the z axes. We have the moments for the torsional springs about the x, y, and z axes. And now that's the first way of doing this. We use Python. Now, there's another tool called the HDF5 Explorer that is free for MSC Nashron users. So you go to the Soul2 Ender web app, you go to the HDF5 Explorer, you find that H5 file, you upload it, and then here on the left-hand side, you're going to get a list of all the data sets that have been output for this result or for this analysis. You're going to get the displacements for the grids, the stresses in the bush elements or the element forces in the bush elements. What you can do here, uncheck auto execute, type in all and click acquire data set. This is going to get all the responses, all the element forces for all the sub cases, all the time steps and so on and so on. If this was an optimization, this would get all the results for every design cycle. And so then once we extract that data, here on the right is the table of all of those values. Here on the top right, there's a button. Click on download CSV. And then we're going to get a new CSV file called acquired data set. Let's go ahead and open this in a notepad and open this in the spreadsheet program. So this is what the first CSV looked like. And this is what the different CSV file looks like from the HDF5 Explorer. So if we look at this element, we get negative 6.388. And this should align with the other method of getting the value. So here, if you compare the values in both files, they're identical. So here you get some information about what data set it came from, what the name of the file is, and so on and so on. You actually get descriptions of force X, membrane. Um, this should actually be, uh, yeah, membrane force, and so on and so on. Okay, now what is there left to do? So let me talk more about this post-processor web app. If you're new to CBush Elements, you might have a lot of questions. Some of the commonly asked questions are, how do you configure the CBush element? What's the CBush orientation vector? What's the sign convention for the element forces? What are the element force equations? There's this blog post titled Nash Trans Seabush Configuration Sign Convention Element Force Equations. Uh, simply go to Google, search for this title, and this should be the first result you see in the Google result. And now let me talk about one last thing. If you're an MSC Nash Trans users, if rather you're an MSC Nash Trans user, you now have access to this free tool called the Post Processor Web App. So let me import this bulk data file. And let me import the H5 file, which contains the results of the CBush elements. And let me go ahead and turn off some of these other elements. Let's go ahead and inspect maybe the element IDs. Let me change the color a little. And here we have coinciding CBush elements. And what you want to do is you want to look at the sign convention for these element forces. So we can open as the post-processing panel. You can select the element force Bush data set. Select any subcase that you want. Here we've selected subcase two. Let's go ahead and turn on the forces on the springs. And we'll turn on the arrows and we'll zoom in. And maybe let's turn off the element ID labels and let's look at some of these results. Now, the thing about CBush elements, the sign of the response does not necessarily indicate whether the spring is in tension or compression. You have to compare the initial and the final lengths of the springs to de definitively say if the spring is in tension or compression. Here, the web app does that automatically. Here, the element force is 
but the web app is telling us with these two arrows that the spring is in compression. If we look here, it's the same thing. For this spring force, even though it's positive, we're being told that the spring is in compression. The same for this. Let's go ahead and zoom out maybe. Maybe what I'll do is um, I'll use first person mode. So anyone who's ever played a game before, you might be very familiar with this mode. So here we're looking at the model from a first point perspective. Here I'm just rotating the model. I'm looking at the results. Here's another location where here the value is negative, but the arrows are telling us that the spring is in compression. And so you can use this tool to look at whether your springs are in tension or compression. Um, these are the... Uh, forces in the springs. What about the moments in the torsional springs? So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. So here the moments, if you will, we're looking at them using the uh, right hand rule. If it's positive, you have a positive theta rotation in the torsional spring. If it's negative, you're getting a negative theta rotation in the spring. And you can do that for the other ones. And so uh, I think this might be a handy tool for a lot of the MSC NAS run users and see if there's anything else to go over. So again, the HD5 Explorer, this post-processing web app, this is new. This is free, rather, to MSC NAS run users. You can get a local copy of the web app. So I know some companies, um, you, you cannot uh, uh, take data outside the company, so you can get a local installation of the web app for internal use. If you want access, you can go to theengineeringlab.com. Or you can write me at this email address with a question and I'd be more than glad to reply. So there you have it. That's how you get the C-Bush element forces from Nastran and write them out to a CSV file. Thank you for watching.